In this lesson, we'll make a difficult turnaround a bit more beginner friendly. This will help you avoid the biggest mistake that a lot of guitar players make when learning difficult parts. Say so you got a song that you're working on and you really want to nail it, but you hit a tough part and it's several levels above you. Maybe it's something like this turnaround, and most players will do one of two things. They'll grind and grind on the one part for weeks or months, just chasing perfection, which isn't all bad, but during that grind, you're not playing the rest of the song and you're not enjoying parts that you probably can play. And by the way, there's a smart way to approach difficult parts, and I've covered that in other lessons. But if you're stuck in this grind, eventually you might end up doing the second thing, which I think is the biggest mistake you can make, and that's to give up. You aren't learning when you give up and you're not enjoying the song. And maybe 80% of the song is doable for you, but if you throw the baby out with the bathwater because of this one tricky part, I think that's a mistake. And this happened to me about a year ago while working on Cliffs of Dover, and there was a better approach. There's a middle ground that can keep you from quitting, but still helps you move forward. So let's start by breaking down the difficult version of this turnaround. But two things real quick before we do. First, this turnaround comes from a composition by my friend Stephen Art. He composed several wonderful blues collections, acoustic blues, and he generously provides the tab. You can find his YouTube channel linked below. Highly recommend that you do. Thanks, Stephen, for sharing your hard work with the BGI family. And second, I teach a full tutorial of his composition in the BGI course called New Delta Blues. Get the tutorial plus a structured path for learning acoustic blues by becoming a member at the link in the description. Now, let's break down the difficult version of the turnaround. There's a familiar structure to this turn. We start out just by walking up for beat one on the sixth string. We've got one and two. Once we get to two, I'm gonna fret that bass note, the G sharp here at the fourth fret with my middle finger. And you'll see why in just a second. We're gonna add some notes to the top and descend back down for the rest of the measure. And as we do, we're actually playing a little seventh chord shape here. So this is an E7, three notes from the E7 anyway. And we're going to pluck with a triplet rhythm, two triplet. So that's the second string, third string, and then the first string under this. And then we're gonna leave the bass alone for a second. We just drop down and do the same thing, a fret lower and do it again before resolving into this E major, right? So when we put the bass in action there, it's helpful to fret it this way. You could play it this way with your thumb if you like, but I actually prefer doing it with my middle finger here. It gives me more control. And I'm also barring with my index finger just to get a really solid piece of insurance here that I'm not gonna miss that second string note, okay? Especially because one of the difficult parts of this measure is we're sliding in to beat two, both the bass and the second string. And for me, I found it more reliable to do that under this bar across the top three strings. You don't have to do that. You can absolutely stand up and play the chord on your fingertips, although you're gonna need to do that with different fingers here, unless you get the thumb involved. However you do it is up to you, but I found it difficult to slide reliably with my thumb. That's why I'm using the middle finger on the bass here. All right, so we pick through. The second measure actually has a trick up its sleeve as well. So we kind of hammer into the E, that's beat one, and of one, we switch to the B note on the A string. And notice that I did actually switch my positions here. You could just hit it again, but I did this intentionally because I'm setting myself up for another difficult move. I'm gonna slide up from that second fret to the third, but and you may have just heard it, I'm also bringing the first string along, same fret. So I've got a pretty tight bar clamped down here and I find it helpful to just do this with the index finger and then get my middle finger involved as just a little extra pressure on top of the bar to help me slide nice and clearly. I wanna hear that slide into the third fret. As I get there, I'm gonna put down the rest of this C7 chord shape. And with a triplet rhythm, I'm going to slide 
pluck strings three and two and then back to the first string before dropping everything down and on beat three pluck the bass so that's the fifth string and then the top three strings b7 right so we're just doing a little chromatic sort of tease here as we go sharp and then back to our b7 but again that slide under the bar to get both the bass and the top note in there is pretty difficult so that's one thing that we're going to work on scaling down as we move through this lesson of course we're going to end by climbing up from the g to g sharp and then the e if this is out of reach for you then here's how to scale it down a few levels first identify what makes the part tough to me the most difficult things here are the sliding seventh chord arpeggios with the bass and that sliding bar and simplify this just by removing it we can remove those parts and make this accessible like this Notice how the structure of the part is the same. The essence of the turnaround is there, but without a couple of those fancier techniques. Let's take a closer look. We're gonna pluck the sixth string and let that die out. One way we're simplifying this example is to not do so much in the bass. And what we're gonna do is fret the D7 shape, and I've moved it up here into E7. We don't have to fret it that more complicated way that we did previously. We don't need that. We're just gonna let the bass die out ring out over what we're doing and we're going to pluck through our triplet now the chord form that i'm using i've got my middle finger on the fourth fret of the third string my index finger on the third fret of the second string and then my ring finger on the fourth fret of the first string and i'm still going to pick with that triplet rhythm so one two triplet and i'm still picking the second string the third string and then the first now if you want to simplify this further you could just roll through it and pick the third string second string first string you'll get a real classic blues turnaround sound one two triplet three triplet four triplet one but we're doing that inside out sort of picking here so we've got one two triplet three triplet four triplet one and notice when we get to one I'm not even plucking the bass there. I'm just plucking the top three strings and I've got my index finger down on the G sharp. That's the first fret of the third string. All right, then we go up to the B just like before and try to leave those top three strings, the top two strings ringing as you do. Then we're going on the and of one to the second fret up to the third fret we're still going to do that tease and go sharp but here we're not even going to play the chord we're just going one and two three so three we drop back down to the b7 chord okay and i'm going to play the bass it's the fifth string and that's at the second fret and the top three strings here which is under a bar third string and then fourth fret You'll play that with your little finger and then under the bar, second fret for the first string. So that's beat three. And then just walk up from the G to G sharp to E. Let's say that you can confidently play the rest of the song and now you can play this simplified version of the turnaround which is great now you can play the song and enjoy it and just sub in that easier turnaround when it comes up the blues is scalable so don't quit don't make that mistake just because you hit a hard part make the part doable but here's the key if your goal is to enjoy the song then really you could just stay at this level and call it a day but most of my students want to improve. They want to play it right. And if that's you, you're going to have this nagging feeling to keep going and to tackle that hard part. After nailing the simplified version, go back to the difficult part. And if it's still out of reach, then ask yourself how you can increase the difficulty of that simplified version as kind of a stepping stone toward the hard part. Here's an example of what we can do with this particular turnaround.
Notice that we added the baseline back in, but we didn't bring in the tricky slide under the chord. And we also brought in a little more of that chromatic chord move in the second measure, but we left out that sliding bar, the most difficult part, I think. Here's a deeper look at the next level of this turnaround. This is a lot like the first example, but we're gonna eliminate that difficult slide with the bass and the second string as we hold down this chord. So if you're more familiar with playing this in a different fingering, feel free to do that for this example. What we're really doing is going back to this walk up and then bass with the triplet, but we're still doing the triplet as two triplet. So that's the second string with the bass now. We brought that back. And then we're going to play the third string, first string. So two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Here, we're gonna do that little hammer on, that little embellishment note as we move into our E chord. But here, we've simplified this slide just a little bit. We're still going to use that same idea. I'm going to walk up into the C7, again going sharp of our target, B7, and we're still going to play that triplet, just not with that slide at the front. What we're going to do, and this is B2, two triplet. It's going to kind of roll through the strings a little bit more. So we're going to go bass, and then three and two together under our C7, and then the first string. So one and two, triplet, three. Drop back down. We still want to hit that, that five chord, B7, with the bass and the top three strings under the chord on B3, and then walk out of here. All right, we're climbing the ladder of difficulty now. We're almost there, and you can see how we're getting closer to the hard part, the standard. But here's the key. We never let that hard part lead us to quit the song. When you hit a hard part, take a step back and ask yourself what makes it hard, and then drop that technique or that note or whatever it is. Simplify the part so that you can play the song and enjoy it, and then come back and refine the part, adding a middle level of difficulty like this one if you need. But you can always work to refine the part. But why not do that while you have a workable version that lets you enjoy the song while you hone your skills? That's the key. And I hope this helps you keep moving forward in your guitar journey. And remember to check out Stephen Arndt's YouTube channel with his brilliant compositions at the link below. I think you're going to enjoy the compositions. Big thanks to Stephen for providing this music to me and letting me teach it here for you. And remember that you can check out the course New Delta Blues based on Stephen's composition inside my BGI. You can become a member at the link in the description and I'll see you inside. Until then, practice smart and play on.